Okay, uh, this is the chapter five, control flow. And um, what we are going to uh, learn today is um, what are the tools for controlling a flow? What is the difference between choices such as if, switch and loops, such as for and why? And finally, how to use conditional tools in data analysis. Uh, as I uh, had a look at the other uh, previous course, there were like five wonderful presentations uh, about uh, this chapter. So I've been challenged about fun, trying to make something different because they, they all did a very excellent, uh, an excellent job. So I uh, put in the chat the, the repo for previous course uh, as I already did on Slack. Uh, just uh, as a reference, uh, there's like at least four excellent presentations about this topic. Okay, so um, we will see how to use conditions for making data analysis. There are two main groups, uh, choices and loops. These are both very useful for making iterating data analysis, such as multiple substitution, matching, uh, predefined inputs, or performing more or less flexible indexing. Okay, iterators of objects pointing to an element inside the container. This is the... Uh, it's, it's Ryan language. Iterators of object pointing to an element inside the container. So this is in general what's happening. Uh, it's a broader view of the topic, but basically um, this is what happened. So we are pointing, we are using functions to pointing to uh, an element, then we may want to change it, modify, recall it and everything. And then this element will find the, an answer to our input inside the, the container with the new, uh, with the instruction to execute. So use if, to specify a block of code to be executed if a specified condition is true. And then you can use else to specify a block of code to be executed if the same condition is false. Then again, you can use else, 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 as, as long as if, as long as you like many times, and then you end with, with, with an else. So you can use else if, to specify a new condition to the test if the first condition is false. Then we see uh, what's happened um, when we use the, the, the function. So we, we have uh, uh, basically three options uh, and this is uh, belongs to, to what, what, what is our objective. So we, what we need to do. We can use if, if we have just one condition and it's true or not. So we, uh, we have if the condition like X equals to 10 or less than 10, and then a true action. So what's happen if the condition verify? Then we might want to add, uh, have a, a different problem to solve or analysis. So we want to, to add a further condition. So uh, the element is not what we want. So what else? Here with the, the addition of else, we can add a further uh, 
condition. And then this will lead to, again, uh, an, a different result. So basically, these are the two if and if else. Then there in R, so th this is even in C++, for example, so they, they are the basics to use. But then uh, you can use even if else. Okay, in base R, there is if else, while in deploy, there's if underscore else. So this if else condition is the one I use most, for example, uh, more than just if or if else, because it's more compact. And uh, I usually have uh, two conditions to verify. So if else um, contains uh, the case for two conditions. So one is true, one is not true. And so you can use if else. So basically if else look, for a verifying uh, condition and release it to two results. If it's true, something, if it's not true, another. Uh, so the, the, the structure uh, in R in, uh, is this. So you have if the, the, the test and what will be the result of the test if it's possible, okay? Um, then, as I said, you can use if, then if else, and set a second test with another answer, and then else to conclude the, um, the syntax. And then finally, this is if else, test, yes or not. So if else is in base R, why in the player you, you can use if underscore else. What is the difference between these two? Uh, I found the answer on Stack Overflow. Uh, this is the, the link. And uh, basically, if underscore else from the player, it's more strict. It checks that both alternatives are of the same type and otherwise throws an error. So while if else will promote types as necessary, so it might uh, be a benefit in some uh, uh, circumstances, but might otherwise break, break scripts if you don't check for error or especially force uh, type conversion. So basically if else assure you that uh, if underscore else, from the player, assure you that you are using the same um, structure, the same type of data. Um, okay. So, for example, if I use if else from base R and I have this true, true, false condition, uh, which if it's true, release A as a character. If it's false, uh, release a number, three. If I use the player, if underscore else, uh, it releases an error, releases an error, saying that must be a character vector because most probably choose the, the first element, so the true element, um, and so advise you that you are using different kinds uh, of elements in, in the same vector. Perhaps, do you have any questions about if, if else, else if, or um, no? Okay, let's go to find an alternative, to scan between alternatives. There is not just if else or if, but we can use, we can achieve the same result using other functions such as case when and sometime switch if we, if we have uh, uh, a list of conditions to be verified. So basically the difference is that um, um, as if else is defined as a condition ve vector pairs and more broadly as a general vectorized if we can use 
case when, when we, we want to vectorize multiple if-else statements. And this um, is the same as which, just mention it, uh, because for example, switch, in switch you can uh, list a certain um, modification and you, uh, dif this is different from case when, when you need to uh, specify each element um, and then the others. A substitution of case when can be switched sometimes. So an example to for um, on how to use switch, for example, is um, uh, in, you can use it by itself or more specifically inside a function. So if, we, for example, um, we like to make a function center. Uh, we uh, use the switch inside the function um, for the type vector. And, and so, for example, we require a mean, a median, um, and a trim value for the mean. So, um, yeah, uh, case, I see the chart that case one is great. In fact, it's quite. Um, is the one I use more often, uh, even uh, more than it has. Um, but switch is new to me, so I, I don't use it very much. I don't know if you use it, if, if you ever use switch somehow. Uh, so this is the, the way you can use switch. Uh, basically, you can put inside a function, specify a list of conditions to, to be matched, to be verified, to be calculated. And then, for example, if I, uh, I don't know, uh, make a random Cauchy uh, distribution, okay? This is a random Cauchy dis distribution. And then making a plot, I want to, uh, to see the, where the mean, the median and the treatment, so the, the, uh, of the mean is uh, uh, in uh, my Cauchy dis distribution. I can do this using the function that I've just made, the center function, for example. Um, this way I can uh, use a GMV line, for example, in this case, so I can visualize where is the position of the three elements I've just created with switch. A case when uh, um, it's, it's more, uh, I didn't put an example about case when, but you can go back here and see the book for some examples, for, for example. Uh, but I, I know um, that quite, quite, so I use it quite often. Um, since I didn't know about it, um, I, I used is if else. But then when I found uh, that I could, I could use case one, um, it's, um, I don't know, I, I use always case one now. So where is it? I can see, uh, for example, if there's some, uh, some examples about, Case one. Okay, for example, this one here. So you are specifying. Uh, okay, this is this is an example slightly different um, because usually you uh, assign you search within your vector uh, that the vector should be equal or 
to match a certain value. In this case, it says uh, uh, search for a multiple. So I search for uh, the value of, of the vector X, which is a multiple of 35 or a multiple of five or a multiple of seven. So if uh, um, this uh, uh, match at zero, then substitute the value with fixed parts. So basically, when it's five, or it, you substitute with fits, and when it's seven, you substitute with but. So basically, when it's five, it's fits. When it's seven, it's but. When it's 10, which is a multiple of five, you have fits again. So in this case, you're going to have 35 uh, because x is 1 to 10. So we can see that. But uh, um, then you can specify other condition. For example, if any there's any now, you put some question marks. But then um, characteristic of uh, case one is that at the end of your uh, specifications, you need to add the true um, argument. Uh, with a tilde and then the rest of the, the vector. So you need to specify, if you haven't mentioned all the, the option available within your vector, you need to use true to specify what would be the rest. So the remaining part of the vector. Okay, so let's go forward to see the loops. Okay, so these are challenging to me. For example, anytime I need to, to use a four, I have some, you know, I need to think about, try uh, uh, several times to see how it works anytime. So I have difficulties sometimes using a four. What is a four? So four basically is a part of a function. And um, in R, you can retrieve some information doing a question mark and then type in four and enter. Uh, with this, um, this way, you can retrieve some information about four. Otherwise, R doesn't, doesn't uh, show anything. So if I go to my R, for example, but uh, I have a, a new script, I don't need it. But if I do, for example, here four, and I click enter, um, I have all the elements suggesting me what I need, I can use uh, or where I need to put the elements inside the, the function. If I take this um, to my console and say question mark four and then enter, I have again released all the, the thing. And then if I go here to the end of the, um, curly bracket, it finally lead me, lead me to, the, uh, let, to the help page where the control base information is. So here I can find some information about the control flow in the base package, the description of uh, the condition I can use if and for and, and all the things. So I can, uh, for example, uh, find in the details um, some information about uh, other uh, condition that you can use inside uh, the main ones and uh, some other specification as well as uh, some examples. Okay, so one example 
software is how to use for if I uh, do a simple for, for example, here there's no curly brackets. Uh, and this makes me a bit of like uh, confusing because uh, when I, I am supposed to use the curly brackets or not, always I can use it, I cannot use it. So here, for example, I don't need to use it. Even if I put the curly brackets here, uh, so I follow the, the syntax, uh, I, uh, I can achieve the same result. So maybe a question for you, if, if you know the answer is, when I need to use the curly brackets, absolutely I have to use it and when I don't need it. This might be an example, why I need to add a curly bracket. So. I'm thinking if you, if you nest additional logic or additional commands inside that for loop. So if you're iterating and also processing within each iteration, I would expect to see the curly brackets as an enclosure of those local instructions for each iteration. Um, it, it would be a really good example if you were to try to do a double for loop where you're you're iterating through, uh, let's say, um, each row of a data frame and don't, don't uh, judge because I know that we have other map and per functions to do that. But um, if you were to iterate through a row of a table and then cycle through each column, the next uh, nested for loop is going to jump down to the next row, jumps down the next row. So the curly brackets would be the ability of encapsulating or, or uh, enclosing that sub function. Does that help at all? Yeah, basically if I have more than one condition to put inside to, to concatenate, have, yeah. You could, you could have any number of conditions, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Those curly brackets are a, a, a method for localizing uh, logic inside that one single iteration. And it can be of any scale, uh, just knowing that obviously if you put a lot of in a lot of content in there, it's going to be fairly slow as it as it uh, cycles through the for loop. Um, my favorite uh, comment for for loops, and I don't know if Trevin, if you've ever ran into this in your uh, experience, but um, you have to be really careful with for loops because they will go off into infinity if you have them bad programmed. Um, <laughs> you can literally shred lots of stuff uh, by by executing and then not realizing and trying to shut it down uh, without it it completely just collapsing everything. Sometimes it's local to the environment, but if you uh, iterate through uh, a lot, it can really screw a lot of stuff up. And for example, um, here there's a, an example, so I can, uh, if I need to um, make a, a four, it goes from N to uh, these values, two, five, ten. So my N will, will be uh, assuming these this values. Uh, and then I have two conditions. So this is the case I must use the curly bracket. I wouldn't because otherwise no, I wouldn't use the word conditions. No, it's not a it's not a logical condition concept. What you're doing is saying for n in this uh, combined list of two, five, ten, twenty, and fifty do these instructions. So take X, assign uh, the, the named variable X with the stats R norm N, and then concatenate with the N value, uh, the, the colon, uh, and then the sum of X uh, to the power of two, um, new line, and then separate with the space. So what I'm, what I'm saying is it's not a, it's not a logical check at all. You're, you're actually doing these functions for every single line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that help? Yeah, 
uh, some, somehow somehow it's a, it's a it's a language by itself so yeah i i, I know that so i i do things um um on practicing uh but uh, um you know sometimes uh, uh saying the words appropriately it's very difficult because uh, you need to, to it's a language by itself so let let's uh, have, uh, have a look at um, some more examples because uh, I have some questions that hopefully uh, can be answered. So, for example, when when I make a, a loop, uh, a for loop, no? okay. So this is uh, another example. So this is a for that go with uh, with I the the my uh index variable that goes from one to ten and then i assign a condition with if function uh each time i my index is less than three it goes next and release the value if it's less than three. Otherwise, if it's greater and equal than five, it stops, it breaks. If it's greater and equal, but then I have a five. Uh, but it stops, it releases and stops. Okay, so if, um let's do some 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 example uh, i do a four okay and i have a variable you you usually it's i okay and then i have a vector i can specify a vector this way like say one to ten and then i start writing my uh what is the name my uh conditions uh so what's inside um what to put inside a loop uh, a for loop um and i don't know without using an if uh, uh i can say i don't know i have my because i've used it quite a certain number of times you know um I have X, which is, uh, it's like when I do a four, it's like I'm building up a, a silo and putting things inside. Then I can release it, the whole silo, what, so the, the, with all the elements, or I can uh, retrieve just one at the time. So, if I, I don't know, let, let's say that I want to uh, basically do um, I less, I, I'm, I don't know, what, what, what can I do? A norm uh, let let's see if I can um, okay for example if I do this okay I have a norm uh, do, do you have any any examples of how to use uh, for for example that you want to talk about? maybe you you know how to use it okay let's copy these things um the book says if i do print i if i do print if i if i call the function print then it it releases the 
uh, the world vector that I've just created. Instead, if I don't uh, print the element, uh, but I call, for example, in this case, for example, I, after the four, it releases just the last number. So there are some, some uh, um, oh, this, this, for example, is one of the, the, the example that I wanted to, to look at. Okay, if I have a mean, Okay, vector, and this is one, 50 and 20. Then um, I have another vector. Okay, this is a list uh, of length um, means. And then I, I do a four that goes from I, uh, from one to the length of means. This is my uh, empty silo that will be uh, filled with each uh, new element uh, of my four. But it doesn't release anything. Okay, so when I use this thing, I need to, to use it or inside a function or inside a Okay, or oh, otherwise I need to use print out and it releases some the numbers. I can even do just out and that's the same thing. Then if I do out, here. Now out is filled with all the elements. What's happen if I do this instead of having out, I have just I. And then I do I. I have uh, it, um, it prints just one. Uh, the last uh, vector. The, the last vector. That, the last vector. Is they not the same? Ah, because this is our norm. Maybe I, I need to set the scene. Okay, out is this, then if I do again. Okay, now they're the same. So this way, it is just the, the, last, uh, the last element. While if I want uh, uh, to, build something, I need to specify where they, where it needs to put it inside. So as well as sometimes I need to, um, this is mentioning the book, uh, sometimes I need to uh, set a data, an empty data frame, for example, or an empty vector. For example, here they suggest to use sequence alone. This is, uh, if, if I use this empty this way, this, M, this mean vector, and I, um, I make it like empty this way, it doesn't work. So I, I can use data frames, but it, it is in this case, just a vector. So I suggest to use sequence along. So this way you can, uh, You can use 
sequence alone instead of um, specify the length. Or uh, what I meant is that you, if I, if I need to uh, fill up these things, for, for example, I want to do this as a, as a vector, or I did this as a data frame, for example. Okay, I want to build up a data frame. And then I can fill it up with this. So um, there's some some um, some examples um, for, uh, with the use of the uh, S three vectors. The book suggests to to pay attention to, uh, for example, when I use date um, as a format uh, for um some elements and if i uh, don't specify uh, this within uh, um, the subsetting um, brackets uh, it changes the uh, the structure uh, of the elements Do, do you have any questions? So uh, do, do you want to share your experience? Maybe have you an example that you want to talk about? Uh, can you print out the, uh, the out data frame that you had? Okay, so maybe I need to um, let, let's see if we can um, find an example. Oh, I think, um, yeah, I think you just had your indexing. Uh, if you switch that on the out data frame, then, um, yeah. then it should have printed. Um, say, say it again. So on line 50 after, after out, if you put, if you wrap, uh, let's see, what, what is it called? Um, Uh, if you put brackets and then I parentheses inside the bracket, um, like this. Is that it? Oh. Yeah. That's supposed to be a lowercase i. Okay. So the, yeah. Yep. So this is my, uh, this is where my, I have difficulties with this. But uh, uh, so you can um, uh, use, use it, uh, um, how? How can you use it? I can pipe it 
use it inside a function. I can use it inside a function, definitely. For I use it inside a function. Yeah. This this was off uh, Stack Overflow that I'm looking at. So it's clear what what's happened with a four. Okay, you have an element uh, that it will create a sequence. So basically, you assign to an index that this index goes from. A number to a certain number, so it should be the the action for the whole length of your vector or otherwise specified. Um, for example, then inside a four, you can uh, add, add conditions and say for this value in X, and X contain a certain number of values. If this value is a multiple of two, then you count these things and you print count. This is, this is an example. Okay. But then, um, yeah, I, I think that this can be, uh, it's a, a part of the, the, the this literature that, it's not very uh, well, it's, uh, can be expanded, can be uh, done a bit more about this, um, I think. Because um, first I, I got confused. And so, and I, I even knew that I make a function even for the C model, for example, if I have, uh, let, let, let's see if I can find it. I even use it for, for a seed model, but I don't learn it. I always don't know how to do it. So even, yeah, even if now with this, uh, uh, with the chapter, it, it says all the things, but I don't understand. So when I, I'm about to use it, No, I don't find it. So, okay, maybe it's this. Well, anyway, no, I don't. I don't want to take time to to find this uh, this thing. But it's inside a function of the the. And um, you know, do you use it quite easily? But then, what's your experience with this? Um, with four, for example, you personally have you got you use it? Have you got any examples or I don't know something like that? I don't use, um, I was gonna say, I don't explicitly author scripting languages to use for loops, but I do iterate through media or but it's primarily just functions. Uh, so like a, an example, if you search for uh, a particular term in a huge file structure, right? Um, you can't do this on Windows, but on Mac and Linux, you would be able to, I would grep recursively with some value. And then it would, the logic behind that recursive call, it says, enter each uh, file, uh, iterate through line for line for line, looking for the uh, argument of search term and then spit out garbage or spit out what, what, what it found. In uh -huh. the relation of writing it in a scriptive form, whether it be C++, C++, uh, uh, 
are, et cetera, you're, you're iterating through something, but you're, you're implying it as, as a logic with limits, uh, or, okay. or you're, you're iterating through how many times you want that to cycle through. And I guess the, the comment I'm trying to convey in my explanation here is I went quickly and just looked at a classic C++ for loop. And I'm like, this doesn't look right. The, the format of how R is managing it doesn't quite look the same as what it would be in C++, mm -hmm. but in the, under the hood, it is doing the same thing. In a classic C++ format, you would have a declaration of the, of the uh, uh, iterator value. In this case, we're using I. Uh, and then it would be some okay. form of logic of how many times you want it to run. And then you would have an incrementer. So or it could be a decrementer as well. Um, mm -hmm. So your, your int I equals zero for I less than five, I plus plus. Mm -hmm. And each one of those says, run these, uh, this logic five times uh, every time you're incrementing the, the value of, of mm -hmm. logical step inside the body of the fun or inside the body of the for loop, you're putting the instructions you want to manipulate or change. So your, your, your for loop is nothing more than just the uh, process of cycling through or clocking through doing an action. I don't know, let's just say that we, we want to <laughs> skip every even or odd value within the data frame or within a vector, right? So you would say, you know, uh, uh, for every I plus two, you know, do this action. Uh, that would probably mm -hmm. imply that it would be every even number. Um, either way, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably not correct now that I'm thinking about it. But you, you see the, the, the cycling of, of the, the looping factor, and it does look slightly different in R. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, as I said, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's um, when you, so at the end, if I need to use it, um, uh, uh, at the end, I'll, I'll find an alternative. Because um, uh, even, even the book uh, says uh, that you can uh, 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 go around using uh, other uh, functions such as map and apply somehow. Um, not instead of a four in itself, but you know, there's other terms around that, that at the end you, you might be able to not use it. But if you want to build a function, if you need to do the things, so a four is very important. And for me, it's not clear. <laughs> How do you do? Well, I think so, at every at every level within R, there always is I don't know eighteen twenty different ways to do the same task. Uh, many yeah. may be just more efficient, and the concept of per uh, or the concepts of map, uh, pmap, etc. You are going through and implying the logic in the same manner, but not worrying about what it's actually doing under the hood. If you're building it in the base R form you have more luxury of modification um, because you're, you're, you're just given the, the, the minor tools and say, here, do something. Um, whereas in the, the other forms of a iterative loop um, or even a, a logical type looping process, you're just passing the variables that you want it to render and then the system takes care of it for you. And again, I may not be explaining the, the image that I have in my head, but, um, you say you say very well so right uh, the theory it's fine but then then when you um uh, are into building up things uh, and uh, uh, so i think it's um it, it requires a bit of practice to be able to use the the four uh, yeah. So, um, for um, for loops, um, yeah, I don't I don't use it, or I don't use it too much, or it's it's not my go to necessarily. Um, 
but I want to say maybe compared to other uh, solutions, you you might be able to do more within each chunk. Uh, so if you had to like do multiple um, actions to 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 whatever you're working on, I think that could be an advantage of the for loop. Mm -mm. Because when you look at this example, you say, ah, okay, that, yes, I understood that. I know how to do it. That's okay. But then you don't need it. These are for educational purposes. So when, when you are about doing the, this, um, applying these things, you, you, you are not making, okay, here, for example, they use two, two indexes, I and J. So the first four goes, it's for I, and the second is for J. Um, so even for matrices, it's very useful for making calculations within matrices. If I was talking about uh, um, the um, match the composition for, for the other book club, okay, the, the asset SLR. So for, for uh, and uh, it's very important to be able to use the four because then you can make all the things. So I think some, some, somehow uh, a bit of practice on this uh, um, is the only way to understand it mm, very well. Because um, I have been told how to use it and what is it many times, but. Um, so, but that's okay. So maybe this is just me. Um, uh, okay, so the, the, this is everything that there's other elements in um, mentioning in the book, um, such as while and repeat to use inside the four. Uh, why there is an action, uh, so you use a condition and uh, correspond to an action and the repeat for, uh, for, for, to an action. These are both for um, to use inside, for example, a for or for performing action while the condition is true. So, but generally you can turn around uh, those things uh, using map and apply. And we learn more about this in chapter nine. Okay, <laughs> so this is chapter five, control flow. Um, we, we will see next week uh, with function, maybe uh, going forward, we understand a bit more about, about those things. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Federica. Thank you. See you Good next job, week. Good Federica. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.